Yeah, g'day mates. I'm going to show you how I did the helmet with the clear glass on my new miniature, the Lord of the Dredge. He's been in the deepest parts of the ocean for thousands of years and now he's come out to have a go. So he's bloated, his face is all rotten, his helmet's all steamed up, he's got seaweed hanging off him. So to begin with, we're using grey sear straight out of the can to prime all of these parts. And when using a can, I like to run it under a hot tap beforehand, and that helps it to spray nicer. Now the helmet head comes with four visor options. They're just these little rings that fit nice and snugly onto the face of the helmet. You can choose which one you want. We're going to use this one right here. See this collar here? We're going to need to leave that off. This collar right here. If we glue it on right there, we're not going to get the head in. It won't fit. So we're going to leave that off for now. Let's get our wet palette. I'm going to start painting. We're going to use Vallejo Metal Color Copper. Great color this. And we're going to just smash this all over the collar and the helmet. This is what we're using for all of the trim on this miniature. Just to add, add a tiny little bit of water, not too much. And uh, we'll only need one coat of this. It's really good stuff. Most metallic paints are going to need two or three thin coats, but I find with the Vallejo metal color colors, they're so good that you can just whack it on in one go. We've also got a bare head option here, like your typical chaos head with pipes hanging out of it. Typhus corrosion, wonderful. Let's get some of that and a bit of sponge. Get your tweezers onto it and just dab a little bit of that typhus corrosion onto a tissue there and then we can start fanging this all over the copper. Focusing it on the edges, creating some scratches and some battle damage. It gives, a, gives the whole thing a nice tarnished look. Now we don't want to be going overboard with this, but at the same time we don't want to be too shy. Remember this legion, they're stuck at the bottom of the ocean for thousands of years. Grab a little bit of Drakenhof Nightshade straight out of the pot and we're going to run this all over the pipes that are coming out of the back of the helmet. And we don't need to do too much to these pipes. We're not going to see them that clearly once he's tucked into his collar. We just want to darken them down a little bit. And as for the copper, we don't want to run this all over the copper. We don't want to ruin that nice tarnished look. We're just going to find things like the rivets and any major scratches and just put a little bit of Drakenhof Nightshade there. We'll grab some known oil and we're going to do exactly the same thing. Exactly what we just did, except we're just enhancing it and darkening everything further. Now, I found a little bit of Athonian camo shade just lying around on my wet palette. So I'm going to grab that and I'm going to just use this to, to put it into the eyes and the the deep recesses of the face and all i'm doing here is just helping my dodgy eyes to find the detail you could use any any wash this doesn't have to be Athonian camo shade this is just whatever this is just to be like oh yeah there's eyes let's define that there's the nose let's define that now use whatever white you want i'm using ceramite white which is discontinued but just use whatever you want use white scar or whatever tickles you fancy and just use this to start highlighting the face, finding things like the teeth and the lips and the nasal cavity, the eyebrows, any little edge highlights that you want to do, just brightening up the face a little bit. And like this is the easiest face I've ever had to paint. You don't really need to do too much here. We don't need to introduce many colors. We don't need to do anything. All we have to do is just highlight all of the edges and enhance the, um, the recesses by doing so. Now we need to paint the eyes as well and so just twist the brush into a nice sharp point and just get that in there where the eyeballs are Let's see if you can find the eyes i actually really struggle to see any kind of detail like that now because my eyes are just so knackered a little bit of black to make things really hard for us and we're going to twist it to a, a nice sharp point Let's see if we can paint a bit of a pupil on this eye. I'm not going to even worry about the other eye, but this eye is kind of popping out. So see if we can make it a little bit more freaky by 
painting a little black pupil. And we're using ethermatic blue, or whatever it's called, straight out of the pot. We're going to use this to paint over the face. Now I'm being quite careful and, and glazing it and kind of controlling it, but you know what? You could actually just paint this whole face white and just do like this contrast paint straight over it, just smash it over it, then we're done. You could do that and I think you'd get pretty much the same effect. You know, I'm spending a little bit of time trying to make it all neat and give a bit of a bit of a gradient and a transition here and there, but you could totally just paint this white and then get your contrast, smack it straight over it. Here we go, and now I'm mixing a little bit of this white with the ethermatic blue and just bringing back some of the highlights. Again, trying to get a little bit of a transition here, make it look like we've tried and there's a little bit of finesse going on. Highlighting around the nasal cavities, the eyebrows and the cheekbones, just pop them back out. Now we're going to use some ceramite white, or whatever white you want, remember? And we're going to paint the inside of this visor ring. We want to make it look like his face is sort of glowing a little bit, or maybe there's a little bit of a light in there. Once it's dried, ethermatic blue, or whatever it's called, to color that white. Now we're going to use a little bit of Gorilla Super Glue, get some on a bit of scrap and get another bit of scrap and spread it around so that we can whack a little bit of this super glue on the back of the ring. And using our tweezers, it's going to fit nice and perfectly in place. Push it down with our finger. How's that? Yeah. All right, next level, next step. We're going to use a little bit of typhus corrosion. Now, all we're going to do with this is we're just going to darken the edge of the ring, the visor ring, just the inside edge of it. And by darkening this down, it's going to make the face just pop a little bit and look a bit brighter. Now we're going to use Green Stuff World UV resin. I've gone and attached the helmet to the top of this base here so that it's level. I've done it on an angle so that it's level. So that when we place it down on the table here like this, it's level. So when we pour this resin in, like so, it's level. Nice and carefully. Let gravity do its thing and make it level. Now this resin is not doing anything until we hit it with this UV light. We've got a UV torch here. And that's how we cure the resin, because it's UV resin. And it takes about, I don't know, 10 seconds, if that, and then it's rock hard. Look at that, this is about 10 seconds later. Epoxy resin, you're talking hours and hours later. So UV resin, it's quite, it's quite good stuff. Now we're going to clip it out. We're just going to finish it off. We're going to use a little bit of Abaddon Black Thin Down. You could use known Oil or whatever. And we're just glazing this on top of the glass, on top of the resin, the resin glass, just darkening the outside, sort of the circumference of it. Now this glass is a bit too glossy, so we're going to use some Lamian Medium straight out of the pot and paint this directly on top of the glass. And we want, we want to do this so that it gets a bit of a, a foggy look, like it's all steamed up inside. Have a look at that. A couple of minutes later, Looks like he's just come out of the ocean, and he's all angry, he's breathing his hot, angry, stinky, rotten breath, and it's fogging up the glass. A little bit more of our copper colour, and we're just going to highlight the rivets around his helmet visor. When the paint gets a little bit dry on the brush like that, you can just sort of rub it over the top of each rivet, almost like a controlled dry brush see my brush here it's not it's not very sharp it's kind of a bit a bit whatever it's a bit how's it going 
but it does the job because we're just rubbing it over the edges. Once we've done that, we can use a bit of super glue and pop the head in using our tweezers to get it in exactly the right position. And now we're allowed to glue the collar on and we're all done with the head. How's that? 